So this was an exciting clinical trial. Um, we um, were able to conduct this phase two study uh, looking at nivolumab with or without ipilimumab in patients with metastatic sarcoma. It was conducted through our Alliance Clinical Trials and Oncology Group with support from the NCI and CTEP. And in this study, we randomized patients to receive the single agent or uh, the combination agent. And we observed some interesting findings. First, the combination was actually fairly well tolerated. Uh, the incidence of grade three or four treatment-related adverse events was only 14% compared to 7% with the monotherapy arm. And in addition, we saw um, evidence that the combination was actually superior in terms of efficacy compared to the monotherapy arm. With the combination cohort, um, it was demonstrated that the overall response rate was approximately 16%. And in addition, the median overall survival for patients uh, treated in the study was about 14 months, with 54% of patients alive at 12 months. And these were patients that were extensively and heavily pretreated. Uh, over 60% of patients had received at least three prior lines of chemotherapy. And so it really forms the foundation to begin to explore these combinations further in the field of sarcoma. And, and really the challenge is trying to identify a biomarker that will help us uh, predict which patients are most likely to benefit, and then ultimately deciding on uh, future uh, confirmatory uh, clinical trials. And you mentioned there the grade three and four uh, toxicity response rate and also the clinical response rate, both about, was it 14 to 16? It seems like a, a risk to take. Will you be, you know, in the one in six patients who has grade three, grade four toxicity or the one in six who respond and is there then an overlap of you'll get better but it's going to suck? <laughs> That's a great question. I think there is some um, suggestion in the field that sometimes when patients have adverse events to checkpoint inhibitors um, they may be more likely to benefit. However, this has not been proven on this particular clinical trial and further in cohort of patients with sarcoma. So I think it's a, it's a point well taken. Um, we always have to weigh the risks and benefits of each of the therapies we offer our patients. Um, but uh, ultimately, uh, the metastatic disease, from my perspective, offers a, a bigger risk. And so good discussion with your patients in terms of uh, what to look out for. And being proactive and recognizes those immune-mediated adverse events can really help us uh, bring these treatments to our patients safely. And could anything be done to improve the response rate if it's, I know, priming the microenvironment or you mentioned the heavy pretreating, bringing this combination forward to second line, even first line setting, something to, to bring that up? Sure, that's a great point. And I think that there is lots of interest in perhaps uh, bringing patients in that have had less prior therapies. I think that's very important. I think we're aiming to modulate the microenvironment with ipilimumab at this point. Um, but you raise the point as to, well, you know, should we consider other combinatorial strategies in sarcoma? And I think the fact that we're seeing these response rates suggests that there's certainly more work to be done and explore other agents probably is something that will happen in our near in the near future okay and speaking of the near future are there any plans to take these trial results forwards in further trials or something we could look out for all coming up soon yeah, so we're excited about uh, planning future trials. I think we're um, in the uh, preliminary uh, stages of that, but I do anticipate uh, there being a trial at some point in the future. Uh, I don't have exact timeline as of yet.